Hello everyone and welcome to This is Africa, and here's Libya. Now let's go, shall we? Nine tenths of Libya consists of desert, but it wasn't always so. Ancient rock art reveals a far different place, brimming with life no longer to be found in its borders, including giraffes with curly tails. As the millennia lumbered by, a change in climate that even Greta couldn't stop saw the greenery lost beneath the scorching sands of the Sahara. Now the people group who would come to dominate Libya were the Berbers, but when exactly they arrived isn't known, but it was many thousands of years ago. As the centuries passed, the Berbers moved their livestock from place to place and even tried their hand at conquest. Libya's Berber Meshwesh tribe conquering Egypt in the 900s BC. Libyan pharaohs were still ruling in the land of the pyramids two centuries later. But back home in the 7th century BC, the first of numerous intruders materialized. The Greeks established five colonies in Libya. The first and largest, Cyrene, was enriched through the trade of a medicinal plant called Silphium, which unfortunately is today extinct. Here's a temple of Zeus. The Phoenicians, meanwhile, founded what would become the future capital of Libya, Tripoli. Persian rule followed after Cambyses II stormed in and took over in the 500s BC, and the Persians remained in charge until they were expelled by Alexander's Greeks, who were naturally welcomed by the Grecian cities. Their reign continued under the Ptolemaic Kingdom, until the Romans took charge of the region. Libya subsequently basked in an age of prosperity, particularly the city of Leptis Magna, the birthplace of Emperor Septimius Severus. And yes, that is a pretty awesome name. Meanwhile, the the town of Ptolemaeus produced the Christian theologian Arius, whose controversial views concerning Christ's relation to God the Father were rejected by the congregated bishops at the Council of Nicaea in 325. As the Roman Empire toppled, Libya was conquered by the German Vandals. Then the Eastern Roman Byzantine Empire reclaimed the region and ruled until the 7th century, when the Arabs funded in and the Caliphs of Islam took control. Libya thrived under the Aghalabid dynasty of the Abbasid Caliphate. The Roman irrigation systems, long neglected, were revived and the land enjoyed a time of plenty. The Shia Fatimid Caliphate followed until the 10th century, when an Algerian Berber dynasty arose and reigned, and then another Berber dynasty took power, both of which gained noteworthy wealth from agriculture and trade. After quite a geopolitical jumble, the Ottoman Turks conquered the land in the 1500s, though the region of Libya gained considerable autonomy or self-rule under this dynasty, during which time, however, there was conflict with Western powers, who were cracking down harder than ever on North African piracy in the Mediterranean, the Americans scoring a major victory against the Libyan forces in 1805, ending the First Barbary War. The Turks thereafter began to rule Libya more directly. Here are some photographs of Tripoli in the late 1800s. This is a bread market, and here are some Turkish soldiers drawing water, with a very dignified looking camel seated majestically before them. 1911 signalled yet another calamity for the country, as the Italians invaded and made it one of their kingdom's colonies. This here is the determined face of Amr al-Muhtar, the Lion of the Desert. He led a long campaign of resistance against the invaders, harassing and raiding Italian forces and outposts until his capture in 1931, when he was hanged aged 73. Today he is honoured as a national hero. The Libyan people suffered immense pain and grief, and many thousands of lives were lost due to the Italian occupation. But then, as it usually does, something happened. World War II. Libya was a focal point of the North African campaign, in which Italian forces were defeated by the Allies. After the war, Libya was administered by the British and the French, but in 1951 it declared independence, and Idris I became king. A few years years later, oil was discovered. Lots of it. That meant money. Lots of it. And money typically means corruption. Lots of it. King Idris simply didn't use the oil revenue to build up and improve the nation, and revolutionary murmurs accumulated with compound interest. In 1969, the king was overthrown in a military coup headed by socialist colonel Muhammadu Gaddafi, a divisive figure. Gaddafi nevertheless did a lot of good for Libya. Infrastructure and human development were enhanced. Societal economic reforms, from healthcare to housing, were introduced, and he funded the world's biggest irrigation project to supply fresh water to the coastal cities. Gaddafi increasingly angered the United States by his support of the Palestinians against Israel, which honestly shouldn't have surprised them as he had earlier kicked out all Jews from Libya. Gaddafi was accused of supporting multiple rebel and terrorist groups. He also wanted to take over this bit of land from Chad. Relations with the West worsened, and after Libya organized a terror attack on Americans at a Berlin nightclub, President Reagan ordered a series of airstrikes on Libya. Gaddafi continued to rule until 20 
2011, when, in the thick of the Arab Spring revolutions, Libya was similarly set ablaze by impassioned masses seeking change. The country collapsed into civil war, NATO supporting the rebels. In October, Gaddafi was captured and gruesomely executed. The war ended and tens of thousands of Libyans were dead. Now, in times of chaos, it isn't unusual for various militia groups to pop up. And one of them here was Ansar al-Sharia. In 2012, they attacked an American facility in Benghazi, killing the ambassador, an act of violence condemned by the Libyan government. In 2014, Libya crumbled into civil war once again, until the year 2020. Libya today, despite its troubles, possesses a high level of human development, the sixth highest in the African continent, its economy almost completely reliant on oil. But as always, the question remains, what awaits Libya in the years ahead? Comment below, but for now, bye bye <laughs>